All right, addicts, check this out. We have the guys from Corners of Sanctuary with us now. Guys, how you doing? All right, Bill. Awesome. How you doing? I'm doing great. Welcome back to Rock Attic Radio. Thanks for showing up. Hey, thanks for having us here. Kick ass. Now, a uh, lot, lot going on since uh, last time you guys were here, huh? Yeah, a lot, lot of good, lot of good stuff. Go ahead, go ahead, Mick. A lot of good stuff. Um, we we've been in the studio doing our follow up disc, um, which comes out in January. Um, but somewhere in between there, we we squeezed in a um, a little holiday EP, um, which has a you know holiday new holiday classic, all original. Um, plus, it includes um, a track off the upcoming album, and then some of some uh, corners of sanctuary fan favorites. We kind of just put in as a promotional piece. Cool, cool so, guys. Now, uh, for the people just tuning in or may not know, why don't you guys uh, introduce yourselves and uh, maybe give us a little bit of history about uh, Corners of Sanctuary. Uh, this is Sean, drums and vocals. I'm Mick. I do uh, guitars and uh, do the best I can on keyboards. <laughs> uh, James Para on bass guitar. Um, we're... Uh, We've been together. We, we we got together in late 2010. Uh, we were working with a with a previous project that we all uh, uh, were part of, and we were doing kind of like a reunion gig with it. And uh, we started talking about uh, you know going back to some of the roots where we all came from, sound wise, writing wise, and uh, you know we had some material circulating. We we got together a couple times just to see if you know if we could still work together with all original stuff and it, it just it went from there and we just uh we just went full steam ahead so that's kind of where we're at at this point cool cool now uh last time we spoke you guys were uh looking for a singer any luck uh well we've been auditioning people we've had a lot of people come in um but we haven't found the the right fit and um sometimes i i, I People may not understand what a, what the difference between a metal singer is and just maybe say a rap singer, or, uh, or a gospel singer, or something. Singer, yep. um, so you know, uh, we'll give everybody a shot, but we, we haven't really found that yet. Uh, but Sean's Sean's going to be he's on the new album, and uh, you know we're just going to keep moving ahead with him. Uh, we would like to get somebody in so we can we can really expand the the live show so Sean can really focus in on just just playing the drums doing that thing but uh you know we're working with what we got you know when they give you lemons you throw them back at the crowd <laughs> <laughs> oh shit well th tell us about the songwriting guys uh you know like on, on the new uh the new cd coming out was the single person effort or was it a group effort well it definitely was a group effort for sure, we got it, um, we got a little adventurous this time around, and, and we decided to do a concept album. So it, it's got a storyline to it. Um, so everything everything really had to kind of work together. So this this disc is going to have 16 brand new tracks on it, um, and it's it's been it's been pretty intensive working writing in the studio with it. You know, like we're in the final process now of you know of getting it all mixed and mastered the way we want it. And um, but it's it's been it's been definitely a collective effort for sure. Yeah, the writing, the the whole bit. Cool, cool. Now, uh, how would you describe your new music to people? We look at ourselves just as heavy metal. Um, you know, we're if if, if you want to get even more specific than that, we, we feel that we're old, we're we're old school. Um, you know, that British new wave of British heavy metal feel. You know, I mean, Judas Priest, Accept, Maiden. Black Sabbath, Dio. I mean, you know, those early guys. That that they're they're all our influences, and you know, when when we think of metal, that's who, who we first think of, and we try to emulate the best that we can. I mean, there are heroes, so who who better to you know the work to try to achieve to be than your hero? Yeah, I mean, we we uh, I mean, we don't want to put a label on it, right? I, I know it's cliche, but to say that, but um, it, it's sort of the way it comes out when it's created, and um, you know, that this time around. You know, we're, we're we're keeping it uh, keeping everyone's head banging up and down, and uh, not get not getting too uh, uh, too complicated with it. Um, but yeah, uh, certainly um, tasteful. Cool, cool. Now let's talk a little bit about the EP December Wind. Uh, 
So what what made you guys decide to do a holiday song? <laughs> well, um, that actually started out as a it, it actually started <laughs> as a little joke between between Sean and I. We we you know like when we were um, in 2010, early 2011. You know we started kind of like charting out some some goals and maybe a path that we could you know go on. So we were hitting some milestones as we went on. You know nothing was concrete, but. At one point, we, we joked about it, say, you know, hey, man, what the frig? Maybe we'll just do a holiday album, too. You know, because, like, I mean, Twisted Sister did some shit. Dawkins did some shit years ago. I mean, so it's like, all right. And then as we were talking about it, I said, you know, I really don't want to spend the time learning Jingle Bells and all that stuff. I go, if, if we're really going to do it, if we're really going to do it, let's, let's, let's just write, a, write an original one and kind of make it, you know, metal in, in some regards without, without, you know, going too crazy about it. Um, and uh, we actually we shelved the idea, and then somewhere in the process of recording the, the new disc, uh, we were we were talking about it in the studio, and and we were fooling around with some piano pieces and stuff like that. And Sean was like, "Well, if you can get something together, we'll do it." So that's kind of what. So, so, so our next session, I had something together, and I says, "What do you want to do?" And, and so that's that's where we did. And um, it gave us an opportunity to to do that, and uh, and then and then promote the new CD at the same time and get it out there. And then we had decided that with the EP um, during the holiday season for, for all the sales, um, a portion of it's going to go to, uh, to charity. And uh, we're going to, um, we're, like for cancer research, because each of us uh, personally have been affected by uh, a loved one that, that's, that's had to deal with that. So, you know, this is a way, a chance to, you know, to help the cause the best we can. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, um, not to plug this too early, but if you go into iTunes, that EP is on iTunes. It's on our website, and uh, you know we're not we're not looking to make anything out of it at all. So, um, other than helping out uh, cancer research. So, if if you got if everyone out there is in the holiday spirit or the giving spirit or has had uh, a loved one touched by cancer, um, you know every little bit helps. helps. Very cool. That's uh, really, really cool and a uh, really cool uh, cause because, like, like uh, you know, just about everybody, including myself, has uh, been affected by cancer. So that that's really, really cool of you. Um, so, so you'll be the you'll be, the, you'll, you'll be one of the first uh, hundred people to buy it on uh, iTunes. Then so yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, any you know what? Any anything I can do, I'm always I'm always pushing anything uh, for cancer uh, support. So anything, yeah, it's, anything it's I can do that. It's not expensive, man. You know what I mean. So, cool, cool. Well, the first song I want to play is uh, "December Wind." What can you guys tell us about the tune? Well, it's um, you know, it's I don't know, you know, like um, like last year I, I was really into um, Trans Siberian Orchestra, so I guess there was some some definitely influence there um, in terms of, of of arrangement that power. Um, we, you know, we talked, we, the lyrics talk about the both sides of, um, you know, wherever you stand with it, that's, that's, that's your, your thing. But, um, you know, the two most popular, uh, aspects of what the holiday season is, um, but we don't beat you over the head with it. Uh, we don't want to be preachy about it, but we're just, we're just saying what it is and, 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 you know, what's involved in it. And then, you know, when we build, uh, you know, a ballad type metal tune around it just to just to keep that power going and um, you know like I said we're not we're not trying to influence people one way or the other it just it just came from the heart um, and uh, and you know we just hope people like it as much as we do cool cool all right listeners check this out this is December wind from corners of sanctuary we'll be right back
Addicts, welcome back to the Keep It Metal Show. We have Corners of Sanctuary with us, guys. How you doing? All right, all awesome. right. Sweet, sweet. So we just heard uh, "December Wind," your holiday track from the new EP, uh, and you guys are working on a new CD coming out in what, January. January twenty second. Yes. Cool, cool. So uh, tell us what's going on about that. Uh, the new disc is called Harlequin, and like like we said a little earlier, it's a it's a concept album, and we know that's kind of a, that's a touchy type of um, project to, to get into with a band, uh, especially a newer band, you know, working on just a just a you know small catalog. But it was something we we used to talk about years ago, and it was just something that kept you know rolling around, and um, it's it's it's, um, it's basically about a about a you know performing clown type speed you know harlequin um who's who's trying to balance the, between you know where he's at and where he wants to be and uh you know he sees the big picture but he's missing all the 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 important things that are happening right in front of his face so it's just kind of it's kind of like a hero's tale um you know kind of like uh, the journey of life type thing you know, i mean general stuff that i think everybody can uh relate to maybe he's been there at one point or another you know we have a good guy a bad guy a love interest that kind of stuff the, tr- the, the tragic hero story yeah <laughs> cool cool now you guys were uh during the break you guys were uh touching on a distribution deal you guys uh have now you want to talk about that yeah we um we we got we got in um in connection with thanks to kathy from loud and loaded because um and she just kicks ass um <laughs> With uh, Lorenzo from uh, who owns uh, 
La Mezacuta Records. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. My Spanish and English are both pretty terrible. So, um, but uh, they uh, once once we started talking, they um, they wanted to put us on a comp CD that they're they're releasing in December. So we got two tracks coming in on that. That's called the Metal Invasion. And uh, from there, they they uh, they decided that they want to do some distribution, um, you know, down in uh, you know Latin America regions um, of our you know current release breakout. And uh, we're talking right now as well to uh, to do the same thing with the uh, the upcoming Harlequin disc. Um, so I mean, we're we're pretty excited about it. We're on their website. Um, you know, we're getting some some bigger exposure. And uh, it, it, it's it's pretty exciting. It, it really is. You know, it's 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 not just us liking the music. Somebody else is, and that that kind of helps us um, kind of focus in even even more so uh, as we're writing and, and uh, producing the new material. Cool, cool. Mm-hmm. Because now you, you you you've been pretty busy. When the hell do you find time to sleep? <laughs> We don't. You know, I, I've actually been up since like 1 a.m. this morning. I don't know. You know, you, you get so much on your mind. We had done a, um, a session last night with a review, and, you know, you, you're, you're going through it in your head. I got a couple hours of sleep, and I, I'm waking up thinking about it, and it's in my head, and I'm then I'm down at my desk writing some stuff, you know, notes and stuff, because, you know, we're, like I said, we're coming to the final um, production end of it, so we're just trying to make sure we have all the... Uh, the ducks in a row, so to speak. Right. It, you, you just you just gotta find time to sleep at work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> when when so when you're not writing, playing out, doing things for the band, what do you guys do for a day off? What do you guys enjoy doing? Um, I love spending time with my son. He's he's a huge influence on me and and big inspiration to me. So I I, just, I love being around him. I I can't wait to see him when I'm when I'm not when it's not the band. It's with him. So <laughs> you know, it's pretty much it for me. Yeah, I, I spend I mean you know I spend as much time as I possibly can with my family. I re- I really enjoy it. Uh, my sons we're we're going through uh, um, picking colleges and he's getting he's 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 been doing all that. So it, that's kind of exciting and. I mean, you know, I, I, I work out, lift weights and, and stuff like that as well to try to keep my sanity. It doesn't do much for my body, but it, it helps keep sanity. So. <laughs> you know, we're, uh, we're, we're all family guys, you know, outside of, uh, outside of the music thing. So um, our lives are pretty boring outside of that, you know what I mean, other than, you know, hobbies here and there. But, you know. I mean to bum me out, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> no man, I'm right there with you. I, I got four kids. <laughs> pay the bills, pay for the stuff with the band. Uh, uh, go to work. I don't know. It's all good. We'll stop. Well, now, what would you guys say is the uh, your biggest rock star moment? <laughs> biggest rock star moment. Yeah, we we're yeah we we're in Massachusetts. Um, the a band I was in for about eight years. We did well. We did a lot of touring around, but I, it was um, <clears throat> we were in Massachusetts, and uh, we didn't realize how how many fans we had up there until we you know we got there, and uh, it, it was amazing to be to be after the show. And I mean, the kids were going, I mean, absolutely bonkers over the the music. And um, after the show, they had us literally pinned up against the back of the wall for autographs. So um, here we are, you know, we're four schmucks from from Pennsylvania going up going up to Massachusetts, and we felt, you know, just the difference was it was just huge, a huge difference in, in the metal scene. And uh, no offense to Pennsylvania, but you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> but it, you know, it, 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 it was it was that was the greatest moment for me so far. I mean, I, I know there's probably hopefully greater ones to come, but that's you know that's that's definitely a that definitely tops it so far. Um, I, I guess for uh, for me and Mick, it was being mistaken for somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty cool. <laughs> and it's great, getting, and you know, you just you just sort of went with it. Yeah, we're Cinderella, man. That's cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. So I, I mean, you know, there's there's club stories, right, and all that. But um, I I do remember. Um, this is a few years back, but I, um, my, I, we were, 
my brother was in the band as well and we were I don't know where we were somewhere out in public like we were just I don't know what we were doing shitting around probably grabbed some fast food or some crap like that and and a group of people actually recognized us didn't know our names but they recognized us from the band that we played in and we I think we gigged the previous weekend and they had seen us and that was kind of cool just that hey you know somebody actually recognizes you yeah not 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 close to not close to where that gig happened too so yeah so oh, cool. that, that was that was kind of cool you know yeah. i mean again it's it, it you i mean you do after a while you start doing the music for you you know because it's a part of you it's it's a piece of you it's an extension of you um but there's always that there's always that that plus when somebody else other than you and the guys in the band kind of dig the music Right. You know, and they they can dig it for what, a, a completely different reason than the, the reason you like it, and so that, that I think that's sometimes the power of of art itself. It's 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 got a personal interpretation. So however it moves you, is a, is a, is a, is a great thing. And so then it goes back to what we were saying earlier. Like, you know, I don't think we get hung up too much on on classifying what genre of metal we are. We're just heavy metal. And I think if, if we start getting too much into the classification, we might box ourselves in, and then we get afraid to get out of it because we're afraid of pissing somebody off or, <laughs> or you know, being called sellouts or whatever. So rather than that, we'll just sell out every time and do whatever we feel is in our heart. So if that's selling out, then I guess that's just the way of the world. And, and you know, here's a, here's a rock star moment. Um, it was a couple of weeks ago we did, we did our first master review. Yeah. So we're we're in we're in my basement. I got these you know these Bose speakers, whatever that I I got for free. But anyway, so, <laughs> so uh, we're down there. And my five year old looked like Iggy Pop jamming to this stuff. So I don't know. I mean, that's not like super rock star moment, but for me it was pretty cool. You know, <laughs> I mean he was into it. So I guess if a five year old could like it, or anyone could like it. You know. Cool. Cool. There you, there you go. Now. You guys have any spinal tap moments you want to share with us? We had about three or four of them. I was on video here before you came on. I shut my video off, so I, I mean, I don't know if we want to talk about that though. Spinal <laughs> tap minute or minute. <laughs> uh, I had a big black mag flashlight in my hand. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> not, not sure what it means. What does that mean? I don't know, but it's <laughs> not, not a good visual. <laughs> 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 Three D. So I think we've had a lot of spinal tap moments. <laughs> I, I I I don't. Oh man, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, what, what what did we say last time? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I guess the, the spinal tap moment. We'll, we'll go back to this one. Um, we we're playing a, a gig. This is a long time ago. Like Twenty years, I guess. Mick. Probably. Um, Sean was Sean there. Yeah, Sean was there. All right, I get confused. Anyway, so um, we, we we played this game. Get that mag light out of your head. <laughs> <laughs> get it out of your yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, hey, this is a holiday show, bud. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, cool. yeah, the place held about I don't know, two fifty, three hundred, and uh, you know the booking agent booked us. We're like cool, whatever, you know. And we were we were opening for a band, and uh, we never heard of them. They weren't, you know, we didn't know who they were. They weren't in our scene, but we figured whatever. So we get there, and the in the and the uh, you know the guy, the manager, is like, "Look, play h- as hard and as fast as you can go." And we were, you know, we were we were new British metal end. So um, we're like, "What do you mean? What's going on?" So we start playing, and uh, you know, we went into our fastest, heaviest song. And, there were young kids somewhere between 16 and maybe 20, right? It was like an underage club type deal. And uh, like 200 people just, I don't know where the hell they were, but they pour into this place. They see that we're a metal band. They're a punk crowd, which uh-huh. is whatever. But And they all turn their backs to us. <laughs> so lead guitar player, uh, Mike's brother, figures, screw it, you know, gets in the crowd and, you know, start throwing his guitar stock around a little bit, you know. <laughs> uh, hey, you guys, you know. That pissed them off. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you know, you remember one, the, the, the one time we were booked, we were booked to play a show and we were, it was like, oh yeah, there's going to be like four or 500 people there and we were a young band at the time and like, I mean, we were like freaking pumped to shit. We, you know, you were going from like, 
um, you know, going whatever. So going from like, you know, crap gigs to to like, oh man, this is great. You know, we'll just, you know, that's it's awesome. So, you know, we, we signed Seth on crap gig. Uh, yeah, so, so we we got a road crew together. I mean, we set the freak up. It took us hours to set up, and I think we played in front of two freaking people. <laughs> and we were like, I mean, we're looking around like, what the hell? What? When? Where the hell are all these people that were supposed to be here? So it's like one of. It, I mean, that's unfortunate. You know what? That's like that's that, like from that Anvil movie. We had the same thing. Like they were playing and like, and um, you promise you four hundred. I don't even know. I'm not even sure if we finished the set. We just said. Screw I don't them. know, but I, dude, I remember the, uh, the bartender. We got free beer, so <laughs> it felt bad for us. Well, yeah, but it was you know, yeah. So I'm okay with that. Free beer is always good. <laughs> but I, I guess that, that's happened to everybody that's 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 played at, at one point or another. You know, you, you you're always promised some some big gig, and that's you, you do the best you can. Cool. It, it was Sean's fault. It probably was. <laughs> <laughs> Usually it is. He didn't feel like singing. <laughs> we, we, we just, I mean, I mean, you know, I don't, you know, what really classifies as a Spinal Tap moment, I don't know, you know, but I mean, I remember we played, we played down at Bonnie's Rocks. I may have said this the last time. I think we were into the first or second song, and uh, we blew, we blew the, the power, we yeah. blew the power, <laughs> and that was it. We, we were done, and uh, we, it was like we were down for like twenty minutes to a half hour, and, and people left and all. So when everything came back on, I think we. We, we we had already we were one of the opening acts and they just had to keep cycling bands through I think I think we played with like seven or eight acts that night so we were like maybe the third or fourth band in and um, they the, the, the whole thing was that they were getting to the big band nobody yeah. gave a shit about anybody else yeah. but, do you remember that, that I forget the name of that big band but the, the lead singer had like a giant fucking baby onesie on <laughs> yeah. the ass I don't, you know what I, I, I... <laughs> Names and I think I remember who they were, but I but that uh, they like a like uh, almost like a band here. hillbillies friggin' undergarment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so we so the, the power goes back on, and I, I think we were only able to do a song or two tops, so we couldn't even do our set. That was kind of shitty. Uh-huh. <laughs> Actually, that was a show we did for Stepping Out. You remember that? I don't even know if Stepping Out's still around anymore. They used they used to be a, a music magazine mm-hmm. in uh, no, in Jersey is. and uh, uh, Lower PA, but I don't, I don't know if they're still around anymore. Hey, Bill, is that what you mean by Spinal Tap moment? Yeah, or? oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got me in tears over here, man. <laughs> yeah, we, we had we had one last night. We, we were fucking playing. Our, you know, we're running through our set, and we were playing one song, and all three of us were playing something completely different. <laughs> we got to the break where where a guitar riff comes in. I had no friggin' clue what the riff was. <laughs> Nothing. I mean, we sat for a good ten minutes, and I go, I, I honestly couldn't remember. Go, and, and they're all singing it to me. Goes, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> what the hell? You're saying? You know? So finally, I mean, then then we all of a sudden it came to us, and then we just picked up right from there. But I don't know what song we were That's playing. A senior moment. <laughs> <laughs> That's a senior moment there, but. Yeah. So I felt kind of good because I'm always the one that's screwing up. So I, you know, I felt all right about it. <laughs> <laughs> my mind's been up my ass lately. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Not up mine. Yeah. Oh <laughs> shit. Well, the, <laughs> the next song I want to play is uh, "Angels Only Dare." What can you guys tell us about that tune? Well, that's that's um, that's going to be the, that's the first song off the the new disc, Harlequin. And um, it's part of the story. It's really about on for your dreams, and um, some so many many people just fall short simply not by not achieving their dreams, just by giving up too soon. And so we looked at it as like you know like it only angels dare to go into where it's where no one else can go because you know they just seem to do so. So um, that's kind of what the song is. It's it's part of the storyline. Just it's about going making that decision. Go for your dreams. Um, and sometimes you may be the only one there, but that makes a big difference in life. Cool, cool. Well, you know, what I want to do now is uh, we want to try to give one of the, your uh, CDs away here. So uh, to the first person in the chat room that uh, contacts me, uh, I'll be sending a uh, Corners of Sanctuary uh, December Wind CD your way. So the first person that contacts me from the chat room wins. And we're going to play uh, Angels Only Dare right now. Check it out.
We're back with Corners of Sanctuary, and uh, I think we got a winner. Sweet. So we got uh, Josie. Josie's from uh, Canada. Nice. Hey. Awesome. I think I think we just Josie just became a fan of Corners of Sanctuary. We just just how's talked. it going, eh? <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> nice. Cool. Cool. Very cool. So you're you're international. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> From Philly to Scranton. To yeah, right. <laughs> so, Turnpike all the way up. Baby. Yeah, yeah. That long two hour ride. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So, now what advice would you guys have for uh, bands just starting out? Yeah. Um, go ahead, James. Yeah, yes, I'll go. Um, yeah. Play a lot of gigs in Canada. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? Starting out, there's there's a few things. That, the first and foremost, play whatever, whatever you create <clears throat> and you feel, go with that. Because you'll play it. it it'll, come out, it'll come out much better. Um, it'll, it'll be real. And it'll be your own style. Um, and, and you're true to yourself, right? Um, so that, that would be one. Uh, secondly is find the right group of people to play with. Um, it's not always the most talented. I mean, I, I could say that for myself, and I think as a, as a band as a whole, individually, we're probably, I don't know, maybe I'm not giving this enough credit, but I think we're probably the average. But, uh, but together as a group, um, I think we're probably, you know, you know, well, that's up up for the up to decide, but I think we're we're decent. But um, as a we're better as a band, I'll put it to you that way. Um, you, you want you want to make sure that the, that the people you're with are dedicated, um, have a, a sound head on their shoulders. Um, you know, don't party too much. Um, you know, and don't have a lot of baggage with them because baggage, you know, only lasts so long, right? Before and it could tear a band apart. I mean, we've been playing together you know, off and on now for 25 years. So, uh, and this, this, this last effort, you know, it, it was really just a phone call away. Hey guys, what do you, let's do, let's do this. Right. So, I, I mean, that, that, that's my biggest thing, man. Just make sure you, uh, you know, you like, you like what you're doing because, uh, it won't last long if you don't. Cool. Cool. Now, are you guys on a label? Or are you looking for one? Well, we're, we're, uh, we're on an independent 
um, March Baby Media. They're kind of they kind of do our management and uh, you know help us with the um, with the recording and all. Um, but at the same time, we we have a lot of control over what we do. Um, so I'm I'm we're pr- we're pretty excited about that. And then in in uh, I guess depending on how you look at it with the distribution and the, and how this new new thing goes, um, you know, with the uh, with uh, La Mezzacuta, we we're you know we're we're kind of we're kind of technically part of their their music catalog family now, so that that kind of helps as well. Um, but again, like you know, we're we're just we just want to maintain some control of our own music and how we do it and and uh, what we can write and what we you know that that type of thing. And I, I think that's important um, as as a band. You know, a lot of bands sometimes <clears throat> lose control. Um, sometimes inside, sometimes um, exterior stuff. But uh, you know, maintaining control of your 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 music, your sound is is really important, especially to us. After all these years, you know, we don't want to lose stuff. And I think it's it's becoming more of a commonplace. You know, as as indie labels are popping up and and people are are um, self publishing their music and you know, the use of the internet and all that stuff. So you know. Your, your own best friend in a way mm-hmm. right right well, so, so the, the, I think the short answer is yes and yes <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. I, you know I, just, I was just kind of reflecting and I go yeah <laughs> I'm going to pass up the opportunity of shit if something comes you know but, I mean, but, but right now I mean I think all, all three of us um, are kind of content with the way things are going so it's um, if something if something gets better, then you know we'll we'll do our best to uh, to address it and, and move forward. Um, but we're not looking to jump ship as right. we stand. Yeah, right. Well, I guess with the with the growth of the internet over the years, not that a band wouldn't want one, but you almost don't need that major label deal anymore. No, no. I guess well, you know, what I, I guess think, no. Yeah, one <laughs> um, of the only downfalls that um, that. We seen, I mean, because uh, years back we were being kind of courted with EMI. Um, unfortunately, you know, it didn't happen. But, uh, but a lot of bands have this story as well. Um, you just you keep owing in the long run, and I mean, and you got to make that long haul so you don't owe anymore. You know, you got to you got to make it like like Aerosmith or Rolling Stones or something, so you don't owe anybody. Everybody owes you. But and it you know it's it's those it's those first few albums, man. You're you you o o o, and uh, going the, sometimes the indie route, the way you know kind of what we're doing right now, you do, you don't owe as much, um, or you know you pay for it and that's it, and uh, and then you can move on. You're not you're not locked into these long term contracts that kind of can stunt stunt your creative uh, process and growth, and um, you know even even years ago I remember. Uh, Bands, bands would sign on to a club, yeah. and uh, and they they were locked in, were playing locked in so many club, times yeah. that uh, play like two a nights week. a week, yeah, yeah, and playing the same set, and it was like a bitch just to add tunes, and they had to go through it like a, a chain to of commands fresh, just yeah. to yeah, and it was just, and then the club sometimes had control of like of, of like if they if you weren't bringing in the numbers for them, you know, hey, change this, get rid of this, that, and the other thing. That was big in the eighties. Yeah, it was it was a lot of big, big clubs. Did yeah. That, yeah. Sometimes you were even um, uh, prohibited from playing other clubs, other venues, right, other right. other regions, because it just you know. Look at the Purple Rain movie. I mean, that kind of that, that that's kind of true. Yeah, they they, they, they work did, you they know? work you to death, and then then they you use, suck they use you in and you're out, and then it's, it's something somebody knew. So I don't know. You know what the hell do we know? <laughs> <laughs> so Billy, yes and yes. Okay. <laughs> Hey, we're just trying to take up some time, I guess. <laughs> hey, talk, talk, man. We got a lot of time. <laughs> so, where where do you guys see yourselves in uh, five years from now as a band? The Marstown State Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're not dead. <laughs> yeah, really. Um, <laughs> man, uh, you know what? I, I can answer this. I guess we can all take a shot at this, right? Sure. Um, I I don't want to look too far ahead. Be honest with you, with you, right? We're we're looking probably six months to a year. I think we have a good. We the way we've been planning things, it's in six six month increments. Um, so 
you know, where does any any musician see themselves that has a dream of, of you know, making it, right? Is, you know, playing in front of, I don't know, 20,000 people, right? So, but I think, I think for us, it's, you know, take it every six months. We know we have, you know, the the holiday EPs out and Harlequin will be out and then not to get too, too far ahead of ourselves. We, we've already started material on, on another release, uh, which will probably come out in well, late, late, late spring, June-ish time frame. Yeah. So yeah, the way yeah, we going, have, we, we actually have, have we, yeah, we actually <laughs> have um, like work wise for the band in terms of projects laid out. We have, 2013 already kind of laid out now nothing's written in stone of course because anything can happen but that gives us things to work towards um and then which also allows uh other doors to open because some things you know like we were saying in the uh at the break with um with the the japanese market that we're we're talking about right now that's something that's just kind of like dropped into our lap it, uh, so we need to take advantage of that as well which that may change things for next year but five years from now i mean i i you know i'd like to have a nice little catalog and and yeah. and uh you know Keep on some it. nice <laughs> tours here and there i don't know you know more time to do uh this to create this to have more time to do it to, to write and and you know stuff like that right now you know I, I think the goal for us right now is is to uh keep the energy flowing and um you know, we're really we're just working on building a, a real good, strong catalog. Um, you know, you, I, I feel that a band's only as good as their catalog. Um, they they may even be better than that, and that's what always that's what the next album always is. It's supposed to be better. So you know, when I guess it starts tanking, then then we'll we'll have to reevaluate. But at least that's what we're trying to do. Cool, cool. Now, are you, do you guys have any uh, upcoming shows? Uh, we do have a couple little private gigs that we're doing um, for for um, for a, a, a small number of people um, before the end of the year, but we're we're actually not going to plan anything mm-hmm. until uh, till after the release, because um, actually once we finish up uh, by the end of this month, we're going to go into um, to rehearsals just for uh, the new the new disc, so we can we can um, increase the set. And then we're hoping that maybe we can start scheduling some gigs uh, February, March, April. Cool, cool. Now, uh, where can the listeners find Corners of Sanctuary? Well, you go to our official website, cornersofsanctuary.com, uh, and you can you can buy all our our um, our discs, current available discs there, and you can um, you can buy uh, hard discs directly online at, at that. Toronto's website. got the discs. Toronto's got the discs. Uh, and we have we have YouTube and or yeah I'm sorry we have um, iTunes and Amazon links. Um, you can you can also get it like at Ezune and, and Google Music and, and and all those places as well. Um, and then you can check us out on Facebook and Reverb Nation, uh, Corners of Sanctuary and uh, MySpace. We have a couple other things too, but man, you get, you get so many of them. It's sometimes hard to to keep up. Can't remember. Right. Yeah, you get to, you get so many passwords. You Oh, rant of an old man. I can't remember my password. (laughs) Somebody help me find my password. It's with my mag light. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's in my trunk. Look on your trunk. Look at where you're sitting. (laughs) Check the seat of your pants. My password is brown sack. Oh, uh, you know, I, I wonder how many people are going to try to hack into your page tonight with that password. There you go. <laughs> brown sack. Would you like the plastic sack or the brown paper sack? Uh, uh, five pounds of potatoes in my brown sack. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> What's the matter there, Reds? <laughs> Who's these? <laughs> uh, I think. Uh, Philly show, James. Uh, I'm sorry. No. We're having fun. Come on. <laughs> we're, having, we're having a lot of fun tonight. How's it? Yo, Billy, spinal tap moment right there. Yes. Talking about potatoes and brown sack. 
I just got me a brick sack. <laughs> oh, right. my God. <laughs> Between that and the mag lights tonight. <laughs> there you go. Do you need a queen soda to keep you cool? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh. Oh, shit. Okay, guys. <laughs> oh. The last... If you, go, if you listen, if you go to our... <laughs> All the fucking links are there. If you want to... <laughs> Actually, do want to venture to our website? You know, go there. <laughs> go to the sanctuary. You, there's 900 ways to get in contact. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, there's I... books to be found on our website. There's so many links. <laughs> I, I am recording this, guys. So we're gonna, we're gonna hear this later. <laughs> great, great. <laughs> oh god. Well, the last song I want to play tonight before I let you guys go. Uh, forgotten hero. What right. can you What can you tell us about the tune? Yeah, it's showing. Well, uh, it 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 started out. <laughs> uh, I broke. I actually wrote the lyrics in oh God ninety eighty nine somewhere around there. Uh, it changed up a bit. It was originally written about a superhero who was kind of um, kind of uh, wasn't needed any any longer, and he was um, like Mister Incredible. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> And um, it's turned more into you know today's today's um, soldiers and um, you know how a lot of them, especially the Vietnam War, how a lot of them are cast out now, and uh, the country's forgotten about them, and um, uh, you know just puts them into uh, you know the, the state of loneliness pretty much, and uh, you know just not needed anymore. And uh, everyone he's fought for, and everyone he's he's sacrificed his life for, has you know forgotten him so that's pretty much uh pretty much what the song's about cool. hey billy can we give a couple shout outs too before we go absolutely go for it um we want to thank kathy at um loud and loaded productions i mean she like i said before she really kicks ass and, and does a great job for us and uh and she's she's always busy um we want to thank lorenzo down at uh the mezzacuta records for you know just uh working with us Billy, we want to thank you for the constant support, you know, and and, uh, um, and giving us the opportunity to, sh to share our music and uh, and talk about brown bags and, and you know, and just and mag lights. And uh, we just want to, you know, thank just the the people that are that are digging the music, man. We we appreciate you. You keep coming back and supporting us. So uh, so thanks a lot. Cool, cool guys. And uh, guys, I want to thank you uh, for calling in tonight. I had a blast. Uh, I'm still in tears. My stomach hurts. <laughs> and I'll probably never look at a mag light the same way again. <laughs> Can you sell me some D-cell batteries? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't lose any power. <laughs> For the hurricane. Oh, shit. Uh, guys, again, thank you. It, it's, it's been a fucking blast. And... Uh, <laughs> You're more than welcome to come back here anytime. You you, you have a home here at Rock Attic Radio. Oh, we appreciate awesome. that. We'll uh, be we'll be getting you the, the when the Harlequin disc comes out. Um, you'll be your copy. No worry. No worries there. Sweet, sweet. All right, gang, check this out. This is Forgotten Heroes from Corners of Sanctuary. <laughs> <laughs> 